and you're here with another installment of Fungi Tutorials. So today we're going to talk about agar. So agar is a must for any mushroom cultivator. So the reason why I say this is because there's tons of cultivators out there and I know I know you're watching this video and you're probably thinking like, hey, you know, I've, I've had a lot of contamination. This hobby has been very difficult. That's probably why I'm watching this video in the first place. And I, I've been there. Contamination is kind of like, to not have contamination is like an exception to the rule. You pretty much have to, to do things to the T. Like you have to follow things as they're supposed to be done. Otherwise, you're gonna get contamination. I mean, you could get beginner's luck and you could just inject some spores into something and it's gonna fruit and everything's great, but most people are gonna have problems unless they're working in a still air box or laminar flow hood and they're using decent spores, decently sterilized grain. And, well, let's just get on to the next part. So basically, agar, Here's an example of it. So I know you're probably used to seeing this like in a petri dish or something of that sort. So this right here, this is just a jar just to make it easier for injecting your spores in there. So basically you would, of course, inject it in there. But of course you want to inject as less as you possibly can because less is more for spores. You know, the reason is because you're, what you're basically trying to do with agar is not only are you trying to clean your spores or, or in a way you're basically trying to separate the the dirtiness of a spore and you're trying to make a, make a monoculture out of it, you're basically trying to get the best genetics of one particular spore that is in there. You're not, the whole purpose of this is getting one monoculture. You want a consistent pin set, you're gonna want consistent results, and then later on you're probably gonna to wanna to clone that really big mushroom that you have. So we'll get to that later. So, let's say you inject in here, you have it in your agar, and then let's just say in about a week or two, you're gonna have a jar like this. So if you can see, there's some mycelium growing in there. So this mycelium, you can see maybe there's some good growth in there. You're gonna wanna cut the section that looks the best, the strongest. And what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna cut that out, and you're gonna make a transfer into another empty agar plate. And essentially, you're gonna start the process again. But of course, you're gonna see the mycelium's gonna grow more consistently. If you notice with the, with the spores, you have like a bunch of little bits of mycelium and they're not consistent. So you're gonna start get, seeing more consistency in the second agar jar. So once you start seeing growth in this agar jar, you're going to cut the best part and you're going to transfer it to another one. So this is the third plate that you're go, going, going into, that you're doing a transfer to. So once you do that, you're gonna start the process again. You're gonna cut that part from that agar plate and transfer it again. So this is a total of four transfers or so, three to four. So basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to basically have a cleaner culture. Whereas with spores, you're just getting, you're just injecting whatever. It doesn't matter how great your bag is, if you're all-in-one grow bag or your grain bag or your grain jars, they're sterilized properly. If you, if you have if you have dirty spores, your chance of contamination is probably going to be 15 to 20 percent. So you're going to want to bring that down to a negligible 5 percent if you can, or zero, zero point something. So once you do that, of course you're going to want to cut that last fourth agar jar, the best mycelium, and you're going to want to get a little cut with your scalpel you're going to put that into a culture jar such as this. So this is just a liquid culture. So you can see you have the air exchange portion here, inoculation port there. And if you look closely, this shiitake culture has a lot of healthy looking white mycelium floating around in it. I don't have a magnetic stirrer in this one, but, but as you can see, you can just shake it like this with your hands and it, it works pretty well. If you're, if you're able to see it once a day and just do a few stirs, you're, you're good. So once you have this culture, you're gonna wanna get a syringe, an empty syringe. Of course, you're gonna wanna have a clean needle, sterile needle, and you're going to basically inject it into here. You're gonna suck it up into your syringe and then you're gonna, then you'll be able to inject that into a grain jar, sterilized grain bag, 
or maybe an all-in-one grain bag. So we also have this in our store and we actually have another video explaining this process. So another way you can do this, of course, when you're doing a lot of this work, you're gonna to wanna to do it in a still air box or a laminate airflow hood. So a laminate airflow hood is just constant pressure of air that's inhibiting the falling of debris on top of your work area. And additionally, with the still air box, the still air box is basically just doing, it's a similar idea. You're basically just trying to prevent things from falling on, on your work while you're doing a transfer from one agar jar to the other or putting it into a liquid culture. So basically, the most important thing is to understand you want a clean environment when you're doing your work. You can't have a sterile environment because all around us there's all sorts of spores lying around and the most common spore that we know about in contamination is trichoderma. Trichoderma is basically invisible, it's all around us. But once it starts growing in your bag, it's gonna look white, it's gonna be mycelium, it's a, it's a mold that basically looks like it might be fine, but when the spores start to drop, it's green and pretty much your grow is done. You're gonna have to basically throw it away, start over again. But if you're using agar, you're, you shouldn't really be having that problem. So actually, if you have any other questions at all, just be sure to comment below on the video and then also visit our store at Transition Creations for more ideas, more videos, and more products. So thanks for listening and watching and keep growing those mushrooms.